Okay, so um, obviously in the book we've got some directions um, on shaping the crest uh, with an axe. Mm -hmm. um, the, the main thing obviously is that if it's a straight bit of wood, then to get this shape into it here, we kind of have to come from both directions. Um, so the sensible thing is to steam bend it. Yep. Um, and that's what most chair makers would do, but that's also a lot of effort. You need to have quite fancy wood, blah, 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 blah. We've just taken this from the plank and we're gonna shape it with an ax. Um, it's probably worth noting that you could use a frame saw with yes. a bandsaw blade in it. Um, you could use a bandsaw, just cut it out. Uh, and also we had pondered doing some relief cuts straight down. Mm -hmm. uh, if you wanted to be very careful, relief cuts, sensible idea. Several relief cuts would yeah. be a, a good way to do it, yeah. Uh, the thing you've been so careful of, we've put that line there, you don't want to expose the bottom ends of these holes yes. into the top of your crest. Yeah. It's exciting, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Axing um, seasoned elm, definitely a thing. Right, so I'm going to start acting the top here, and this is the bit that, in theory, I don't have to be quite so careful with, right? Yeah. Hopefully we're all agreed on that. Um, so this is putting on our 10 degree, um, what do we call it? A slight lean back on the crest, uh, and that, that angle just is much more comfortable for your lumbar support. So if this was a cleft bit of wood, then I'd really confidently be able to just axe away. It's really not feeling nice there, a little bit. Sometimes with sawn wood, you chop in with the axe and suddenly it just splits right off. Woohoo! Anyway, slowly but surely, we can get some of this bulk off. And so this stuff, I'm hoping that there's, there's less risk um, because that pencil line is where our holes are. Anything above that should be fair game for me to just shape. We gave ourselves a few mil as well above the holes, didn't we? Exactly, yeah. So I can totally go to that. You see, we've got an awful knot. I think that's there to there, yeah. um, which is going to be fun. Uh, now, if you'd use sycamore for your seat, then this would probably be a bit easier. So I'm not going to go further than that. It looks horrible and rough, but we can tidy that up with a draw knife, etc. cetera. Um, <coughs> should we do another easy bit, these bits off the back? Yeah, maybe a little bevel on the front as well. Yes, on the front where? Ah, yes, yeah, so I'm going to do that last, right. save the hard bit for last. Yeah, fair enough. Should do the hard bit first, right, I, really? Well, if you're going to make a mistake and have to throw it away, you might as well make the mistake of just 10 yeah. seconds and 10 minutes. It's the sensible thing to do, um, but why change a habit of a lifetime? Woohoo! So, you can have a look at your grain. I think, in theory, this should be pretty good, cutting across the grain, coming down the grain here. Um, so you can have a look, see how that grain goes, and doing that curve should be pretty easy. Um, and that was how we laid it out. So lucky when we were laying it out, Robin had a little look and saw the grain turning, and that's why we decided to have it this way round was to make these these cuts nice and easy. Um, it's probably worth, we just hand drew these curves on, didn't we? Yeah. This was just for the video. Would have been better to maybe just draw around a template of some kind to get that maximum curve in. Okay, so now I want to get this bit. Um, with greenwood, it's a lot easier. These kind of straight down cuts a little bit more successful with greenwood. But once you've got something to kind of aim for, you can kind of work your way back and forth like that. <coughs> so just a 
case of nibbling away, isn't it? Yes, I think so. Of course, if you're not confident with an axe, there's nothing stopping you doing this with a gouge with, an, with it nice and held down nice and firm, isn't there? Yeah, yeah, that's a great point. So, and you'd probably maybe do that even when it was left square, or yeah. you'd just do it in that direction. Um, if it was left square, then you could see the line. Mm -hmm. Have that pushed into like a bench hook? Oh, yeah, or a big, a big vice if you've got one. Yeah, totally. Um, and, a, and a gouge and a mallet. Yeah. Yeah, or an, even an ant. Yeah, you can even leave the piece of wood far too long. <coughs> screw it down onto a plank if you want. Yeah. There are many ways of holding a piece of wood. So if you feel like you drilled your holes pretty wonky, then you maybe need to be a little bit more careful at this point. Um, and just be wary of, um, I suppose, the angle that this curve is coming in. If you actually have that angle like this, then you're more likely to be coming into those drilled holes. So, I'm trying to come square, and if anything, just to touch this way. Um, and just getting this bottom bit set. And definitely, if you could draw much better curves on, um, you'd be much better off. You don't really, once you're getting down towards your line, you don't want to be splitting off big bits like I was just doing then. Um, so that's probably, I probably don't feel comfortable going that much further with the axe down here. Um, but I think I can blend this curve a little bit. I'd certainly feel more confident if it wasn't for that knot, taking this bit above the line. Um, I can't really remember how. How do we shape this bit? That, it's this, nice to have that coming off there, isn't it? Yeah, this part leans back, and that part dips in, and they blend here, don't they? Yeah. I think if you can see, because we're trying to get as much curve out of it for the spindles, we've got a bit of a flat here. So if I can curve this as much as I can here, you won't notice that flat so much. Um, and on the finished chair, you barely notice that. Uh, we just blend that in with very fine tools. <clears throat> so it's still a fair old chunky bit of wood. Still plenty of material to come off there. Um, but maybe, maybe now's the time to move to a draw knife. Um, This top thin. How thin do you reckon I come on the top here? You could take that to a point if you wanted to. Yeah, that's aesthetically, good point. I wouldn't. Maybe twelve mil. Yeah, and we put. I think we put quite a big facet on the scallop as well, didn't we? <coughs> on the witch bit. Did we not put a nice facet here? Yes. Yeah. Another thing to keep an eye on as you go is you're going to have the, uh, this is where the arm goes in. Mm -hmm. you, you, you're going to still need plenty of wood there, I think. Yes, for strength. For strength yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, I think we're probably getting there. Yeah. Might just do a bit of to and fro on this knotty bit. Get slightly more material off and leave it a little bit neater. Um, but that's the basic rough shaping of the crest. Uh, yeah, fun. 3D. 3D. Okay, so we've taken the uh, crest to the draw knife to clear up some of this axe work. Um, I think a skill worth learning is to use your draw knife backwards. So to push it, you need to just consider where your blade's going to go if you slip. 
You know, I've got, I haven't got any knees up or anything. That's a nice motto to live by. I always say no meat in front of the blade. And we're just going to be careful not to cut into the uphill section at the other side. And we're keeping an eye on where our holes are as well. Nice slicing action. Your draw knife will always cut better on a slicing action. As you can see, this is a tough piece of wood as this season, Dale. If you follow the instructions in the book and you use a green piece, I mean, you, you could use birch, anything softer than this, and do most of the work while it's green. Uh, you'll find that a lot easier. Okay, so that's pretty much cleaned up now. Uh, you aren't limited to your draw knife for your spoke shave. If you have a travisher, you could use that here. The main, the main thing is that you're removing wood and you're doing it safely. So now I'm just going to tidy up the profile a little bit and put some chamfers around the edges. side. Just going to round the top over a little bit. Then I'm going to put chamfer around any 90 degree or close to 90 degree edges. We've still got an axe finish on the back as well, so I'll give that a bit of a tidy up too. Now it's carving dry elm, it's heavy going, but you get an absolutely lovely finish. Okay, so I'm going to transfer the uh, chamfer we did on the front there to the back. Just going to take a moment. Okay, so you don't need to see me do all of this. I will get on with the rest of this and then the next time you see us we will be starting to fit it together.